Roger, thanks for dropping by. Sunday chat today will be all sorts. <laughs> but, as I went to an orchid nursery yesterday, did I come home with anything? You'll have to wait till the end to find out, won't you? You don't actually, you can skip, can you? <laughs> Keep forgetting that. Shouldn't have reminded you. Anyway, um, thank yous first. Let's get them out of the way. Thanks to those who've used the Buy Me A Coffee to make a small one-off type donation. Sort of thanks for this video thing. Um, big thanks for those hanging in there with the Patreon site. Um, the idea of that is a regular small contribution to the channel for the upkeep. And a new thank you for the members. Um, I've opened up the membership for the channel so you can join and become a member of the channel. At some point in the future there will be some perks like videos for members only, that sort of thing. If I get enough members I may do live broad broadcasts specifically for members. So you almost get a one-on-one -on -one chat if you think about it. Because um, you know there won't be a huge number of people compared with if I do a live broadcast open on the channel, the chat goes so fast I can't even read it. <laughs> but we will be doing some of those down the line as well. Um, if you're not subscribed, it would be nice if you do did so. It's the one thing you can do that helps the channel that costs nothing. <laughs> so. Click the old subscribe button. If you don't turn the notifications on, you don't get pestered with emails every time I load a video, which is most days. Um, so you can subscribe to a channel and walk away effectively. Um, <laughs> but I prefer you not to do that. I prefer you to stay and watch. But uh, um, the subscription numbers going up helps YouTube see the channel in growth mode, as does the thumbs up and the sheer number of comments on the videos. That is how YouTube sees the videos. So uh, It's all gratefully received, so thanks a bunch for all that sort of stuff. Right, on to today then. I'm going to start with showing you some media. Tucked away in this little secret bag is something most of you who watch the channel regularly would have thought you'd never see again. I've got some sphagnum moss, as in the New Zealand type. This is actually the long strand stuff, the special stuff. That's not, I didn't need that specifically, but I got that from Lynn when I um, went back there last night after my day out. I have one plant in here that I need to use that on. I don't need to, but I want to, let's put it that way. And that is, as a direct result, <laughs> of my visit yesterday and one type of plant that I've got. So that's that. Um, and that repot will be done quite soon now. So my day out. Well my day out started with going to Lynn to drop off all the treasurer's stuff for the Orchid Society meeting which I was not going to attend. That's the first one I've missed. Is it? No, I missed something else once because uh, it was when Elvis got poisoned and I didn't think he was going to make it and I just sat with him for the day. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yes, so I got that done and then set off on my way. And not long into the journey, we ground to a miserable halt. Um, there is a town on the, well, on the south coast called Chichester, a lovely historic town. And... Um, it has a bypass and whoever designed it failed miserably because although a lot of it is dual carriageway and has all the hallmarks of taking the traffic away from the town that is just going past they don't want anything to do with town. I'm just going past so you go on the bypass but what they failed to realize is where they put a roundabout and there's a road heading into the town center there are times when that road gets busy and the way a roundabout works in the UK is because we drive on the left you give way to the right so you're giving way to a minor road stopping the bypass working and then repeat several times so it just grinds to a halt nobody's going anywhere the people coming in off this side road block the roundabout so nobody's going anywhere 
and the road into town's blocked because you've got sets of traffic lights backing up. It's just a miserable design. Whoever designed that should not still be working. Um, <clears throat> but then it probably went to a committee and somebody convinced everybody it was the right thing to do. People who knew nothing about road design probably designed it. Anyway, so I lost a lot of time, probably 20 or 25 minutes, just stop, go and stationary for a lot of the time. Which meant when I arrived at the other end, my planned sit-down pub lunch couldn't be done because I had lost my time. I'd even gone online and found the pub I wanted to go to and had a look at their menu and selected what I wanted to eat to save time while I, when I got there. So I ended up calling in a little local shop and getting a sandwich and that's what I had for lunch because I'd lost all my time. Um, I only just got in time, got there in time for the two o'clock start. So uh, in the end, it was a, a lazy start because I, I, I said to David, um, are we getting going at two o'clock? And he said, well, we're waiting for everybody to arrive and we've got a group of people all coming together that have been delayed. I said, yeah, so have I. Um, but I allowed enough time to at least get here on time. But So it was a leisurely start. So uh, anyway, um, my friend Brian Gould was there um, from Wessex Orchid Society, so we had a chat and um, a chat with Jim, uh, the guy who does the tour and everything. Effectively, although it's a foundation, so effectively it's a charitable organisation based on conservation. They've got external conservation, they have a <coughs> place in South America somewhere, it might be Peru, but don't quote me on that. They have a place that's been set aside, basically, a reserve, where there's lots of um, native orchids growing wild and everything, and it's, it's being preserved in its pristine state. Um, so that's external conservation. The internal conservation is based on keeping a lot of the um, species going, because they are becoming scarce or even extinct in the wild, therefore Taking on people's private collections because they can't look after them anymore is part of their input, plus from other places. So it is a foundation, it is a charitable um, thing. It's not open to the public generally, they just have a few open days in the spring when the majority of things are in flower, basically. So um, I had a coffee when I got there, <laughs> thanks to the lady who wasn't expecting to be serving coffee at, at the start. It was more like at the end that was expected, but uh, because I didn't get my lunch, I hadn't had a drink or anything since I'd left home. So uh, that was nice, and I had some cake, nice, well, appeared homemade, but probably wasn't. Um, but it was very nice, whatever it was. And then we started the tour with Jim, and basically I hung back because I've actually been on the tour before and a lot of people there that was their first visit so it was more important for them to get near the front sort of thing so um, and I, I wasn't filming while Jim was doing his um, tour anyway um, and several people who knew me from the channel came up and said hello that was also nice so all in all it was a good day out um, <laughs> and it got to about 20 minutes from the end and I thought my camera's in my pocket and I haven't taken it out yet. I had 20 minutes left to get round the whole place and film. Consequently, <laughs> those parts didn't get filmed. Um, it, I won't say it's thin on the ground. I've got enough to cover what was there, but um, it was a bit of a panic. <laughs> um, especially as I've done something different this time. So when I put the video together, um, probably tomorrow morning, um, I may do it later today, I don't know, but I've already had a play this morning because in my mind I had a new idea for doing shows um, and I wanted to try it out to make sure it looks like it's going to work. It is different, it's a whole new style and obviously when I post that video, it'll be posted on Monday um, sometime, that'll be my Monday video, you know, you can get to say whether you like the new idea or not. But it utilises a new bit of kit, a subtle hint, um, but it's quite complicated to do. It'll, it'll tax my little brain, um, which is good. I like a bit of that now and again. 
So that's that. Um, I called in Lynn's on the way back to pick up the treasurer's stuff to bring back here and this afternoon at a very leisurely pace I'll bring the books up to date and because um, we had a new member join and people have paid various things I've got to get all that into the books and get all the money sorted out ready to go to the uh, ready to pay in so I'll do that later today. So that's all that sort of stuff. The day out yesterday was if you took away the traffic issues, it was a lovely day. I took a new route to the area where the nursery is. Normally I would um, carry along the main road for quite a while, because it's a good road, you know, you take advantage of that, and then thread my way up through smaller roads. Well, I turned off earlier onto a single road that went straight to the town. The nursery's off to the side. So, um, and what a gorgeous run. Beautiful scenery through some woodland, rolling hills, orchid countryside, native orchid countryside on the hillsides there. I could see that a mile off. Um, so yeah, a, a, a route that I will always use if I'm heading up into that area from now on because it's well worth it. A couple of slow points, you know, you go through a village, your speed limit comes down sort of thing. So, um, But you expect that out in the country. Um, so yeah. A good day out, enjoyable. Got back late, um, late enough that I didn't want a meal or I wouldn't have got to sleep. I'd have been still in bed. Um, so you know, I just had a snack when I got in and a glass of wine and a sit down and um, that was my day. Most enjoyable. Uh, so that's that. Um, what else? There's one new bloom over there, but I'm going to save that for later. That's one of my nobilies. Is open. Well, it's not even fully open yet, so there wouldn't be much to see. So I'll save that. It's just a pair of buds coming out at an odd time. Um, and I notice there's lots of nubbins kicking out of one of the other canes on that plant as well. So uh, we'll do that as a separate video. Um, we're now well into um, February, or edit heading towards the middle really, I had a chat with Jim about um, actual temperatures, temperature control and all that sort of stuff, specifically in the um, odontoglossum house, uh, as I call it, where all the um, oncidium types and the old-fashioned odonts are. I could live there. I could have a bed and a, and a little TV in the corner and my laptop and access to the internet and I'd just live there help look after the plants and it's such a smashing place to be. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I had a chat about temperature ranges and things like that and what Jim said is that the important thing to maintain, because obviously they, 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 they've got three heating sources as you know a backup and a backup backup in case anything goes wrong, that collections there are just too valuable to contemplate losing due to Heat, heating failures sort of thing, so plenty of backups there. Um, a very green place, they, you know, they use rainwater, um, there's a lot of solar heating supplied and um, yeah, they, they, they're very conscious of being green. Um, even the media they use, the sphagnum that they get is from a renewable source in South America and basically they just harvest huge areas about every third year, something like that. And then it regrows and you know it's maintained like that so it's renewable um, the only expense is getting it here which they're trying to do away with because they're thinking that somebody in scotland might be able to replicate where that comes from and then it's in-house in the country without having to do i would imagine it gets flown over i don't know but um yeah it, very green. And I had a chat with Jim about temperature ranges and he said the important thing is maintaining the average rather than specifically looking at minimum night temperatures and maximum day temperatures. He said you need an average for the plants. So if you get a particular night where it drops down lower than you would like, then make sure it goes up the next day to put the average back in. And that's how he tries to work the nurseries because, you know, as you know, this year we've had some very, very cold spells. Um, they had temperatures there, outside temperatures that they'd never recorded before. And back last summer they had day temperatures in the heat waves that they'd never recorded before. So they have to put up with those situations. They have a lovely um, sprinkler system 
produces a really fine mist and within minutes it takes the temperature down 5 degrees C. <laughs> it's that good. <laughs> and he said that got used an awful lot back in those heat waves because you know they were heading up towards 40 in the greenhouses and you know that's not doing plants any good at all. So yeah, um, good stuff basically. So that's all of that and I've oh, thrown it away. I took a photo of this and got the picture of what this was like when it bloomed and I put it on a sheet of A4, printed the pictures off and took them in. And um, I said to Jim while I was having my first coffee, um, I've got a bit of a conundrum, an anomaly. I bought a plant here. <laughs> he always looks up and says, was it one of mine? Because <laughs> you've got plants that have come in from other people's collections, but a lot of the plants came from McBean's, which is where Jim worked for, whatever, 40 years or something. And an awful lot of the Cymbidium hybrids that exist from McBean's, Jim created and grew on and thought of in the first place. Well, if we mix that one with that one, we should get that. So a lot of work went in by that guy. And a lot of the results are now in the Mathers Foundation, so you know so he gets to see his you know results of his efforts. But um, I said, well, it was Cymbidium Copper. I think it was one out of David's private collection. He said, oh, well, okay, not one of mine then. Um, and I showed him the picture, and I said, this is what it was like when I bought it this time last year from David's private collection, and it's in flower now with that. And he said, that's not the same plant, that's totally different. He said, that's two different plants. And he said, and that's in the same pot? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, oh, mix, mix up in the potting front. <laughs> he said, no, they're totally different plants. He said, e you can get colour variation due to temperature and things like that, but not that drastic, not that bad. You know, you get a, a pink might be a bit darker or a bit lighter. You know, a red may head in towards pink, that sort of thing. Um, yellow can go a bit greeny sometimes but he said no not that different and he said <clears throat> the giveaway really is the lip if you said if you look at the lip they're obviously two entirely different plants the patterning is quite different and i just looked and he, he looked quite is this going to be a problem like are we going to get a complaint and i just went bonus two for the price of one <laughs> so that resolves the anomaly when i repot it there will be two separate plants in there so we've gone from the three cymbidiums we've got to now having four, for now. Right, and I'm going to end today with, well, what did you buy then? What did you come home with? First of all, I'll tell you about why, what I didn't come home with and why. <laughs> I was stood in the doorway to the um, Odont place. And as Jim walked past, I said, apparently there's going to be some sales. Is that true, Jim? And he said, well, you see that table there with the big sign, plant sales? <laughs> I said, sorry, <laughs> it's right in front of me. So they had some of the Odonto Glossoms for sale. And I looked at some of them and I thought, I could take most of these home. I bet they're expensive. Couldn't see any prices on any of them. And um, somebody picked one up as David walked in and said, um, I'm thinking of buying this, how much would this be? And he said, um, well, on this table here, they start at £100 and go up to £500. <laughs> and I just thought, well, they're staying there then because I'm not paying that for a plant that could die, you know, at the end of the day. So, uh, and when I left at the end, most of them were still there. Um, I don't know the logic, you know, the, if those were spare plants that they no longer need, well now they've still got them because they outpriced themselves, if you see what I mean. Um, I understand why they're that expensive, don't get me wrong, these are, not, you know, these are, you know, they take a long time to produce the hybrids, you know, you've got to wait for a pod on both plants. Um, Sorry, you've got to wait for the pollen 
uh, the blooms to be on both plants. Then you've got to have a successful pollination. Wait for the pod. The pod's got to be successful. You've then got to get the seed going and you end up with flasks and then you've got a, you know, a three, four year period to bring them on to flowering to find out whether you've got anything that was worth bothering with. So it is a slow process, um, you know, and the, the running of that place must cost an absolute fortune and it's all done by donations sort of thing. So uh, anyway, they stayed there. However, in the Symbidium house, you've got their... Um, they call their stock plants. They have some huge plants, like, you know, they're in pots about that big. You know, and they're this high. <laughs> Massive. And they're all along down one side. And they are specifically kept for cut flowers. So what they want from those plants is as many spikes as possible, with uniform blooms, and as many as possible. And that's their job. That's what those plants are for. In the growing season, as they get to starting the spike production and everything like that. They are fed and watered five times a day <laughs> to get that growth and that number of blooms and those, that number of spikes. So that's, that's the first bit of the Cymbidium house. The next bit are the Cymbidiums that are part of the foundation. So a lot of these would have come from McBeans, some from private collections. David Mathers put some of his own in, I believe. So those belong to the foundation and those are not for sale. Um, but then there's the rest of the Cymbidium house, which is quite a lot of it. It belongs to their landlord, I think that's what they said, which is a company called Simply Cymbidiums. And he said, any of these are for sale. <laughs> and he said, we don't charge a lot for them. Um, we just make sure that we make a profit because they're not strictly speaking our plants, but we've got permission to sell some. So, you know, I said later on as I was sort of thinking about buy, I thought, well, I can't, can't buy an Odont. I haven't got that sort of money. Therefore, oh, this is Elvis. <laughs> I wonder what on earth that was. He has nightmares or he has dreams sometimes and he's like half asleep and he yells like that in his sleep. He's gone back to sleep now. Strange noise he makes. <laughs> he's dreaming or semi-dreaming. Um, anyway, so I thought, well, if I can't have an odont, perhaps we'll go home with a cymbidium, hint, hint, as to what I've got. Um, and I, I said to Jim, I said, which was the bit where the cymbidiums are for sale? And he stood there like that and he went, all that, <laughs> all that out there. I said, oh, I'll have a look round. <laughs> he said, do. <laughs> and I did. So let's see what we got. I've got to get the um, cellophane off. That's always a problem. And it's here. I had, um, I had this one, I grabbed it, and I went back out to the um, counter to sort of pay for it and everything, and um, that's when I realised I hadn't done any filming. Um, so I had to rush back in with the camera and do filming, so I left it on the counter, and right at the very end I said to Jim, have we got a name for this one? He said, has it got a tag with a number on it? And I said, yes. He said, well give us a number, I'll go and find it. And, and he did. So this is what we've got. We've got another Cymbidium that is a lovely deep red and a, a tip from Jim, I said, are these going to stay cup shaped or are they going to open more flat, you know, more widely? And he said the easy way to tell is if they're a long bud that's pointed, they're normally going to open flat. But he said it's not a 100% guarantee. And no, this was the only one or uh, that had open flowers on it. All the others were still in bud, so I could see what they were going to be like. Um, we've got three spikes on here. We've got one here just opening. We've got another one round here that's um, not opening at all, so that one will come on behind. And this is their new generation of cymbidiums that they're, they're breeding. And what they want 
is 333. Let me explain, as Jim did. He said, if you look at these cymbidiums here, they're all three years old, they've all got three stakes, and each stake has three clips. So he said, if you've got a thousand of those plants, that's 3,000 stakes and 9,000 clips to get them into a state where they could be sold. So he said, what we're doing now is we're picking plants that have got exceptionally sturdy spikes that are self-supporting. So what we now hope to achieve, which they have in some cases like this one, is a plant that will bloom in three years with multiple spikes that don't need stakes and clips. And that's their goal. And they're getting there. This is one of those where the, the spikes don't need any staking at all. They head for the sky and they stay nice and upright. So I've got one of the uh, forerunners of those generations. So, uh, so that's it. And it's got a name. Jim, Jim went back. He came out with a puzzled look on his face and he said, what was that number again? I can't find it. It's not on the database. So I told him and he went, mutter, 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 walked off again and he came back. And it's called Jamie Red. So Cymbidium Jamie Red. <coughs> and it is a lovely deep red colour. And hopefully these will open reasonably well because some Cymbidiums stay cup shaped. They stay that shape. So you have to get right in line with them to see the detail on the lip and the colours inside. And some open like halfway and some open quite flat. Um, so hopefully this one's going to open up quite a bit more than that. So there we go. So I don't grow cymbidiums by the way. I've said many many times I don't grow cymbidiums. So these three over here that magically have become four and this one makes five. But I don't grow cymbidiums. stand up at the moment which is a nuisance it probably needs some water um, yeah so a good day I came home with a plant that um, you probably can't buy that anywhere I don't I'm, I'm gonna look that hybrid up um, make sure it's actually a registered name which it should be I think um, and um, you know see if there's any history behind it or anything but um, I'm not fussed it's got a name I like the color it's a nice strong plant and um, yeah, good stuff. So uh, that's that. Things coming up this week. Nothing. <laughs> Although I must wash the car. It's absolutely filthy. Before I went out yesterday, I had to go around with a wet cloth and wipe all the lights and the number plates off. Otherwise, it was would have been an offence, basically, um, to drive in the dark with insufficient lighting and not being able to read your number plate because it's covered in muck is actually an offence. Um, you could be involved in an incident and people can't take your number. So it's actually an offence. So I did all that before I left, but I must get the car washed, it's filthy. I did the inside of the car, I gave that, because of all the taking the rubbish up the tip, I gave that a good hoover, put the back seats back up again, got everything straightened up and uh, the headrest back on and got that sort of okay, but the outside's filthy. It's the salt on the roads, you know, where we had the cold weather, they've salted the roads. It's a, it's a mess. It needs washing off as well. Don't do the car any good. I shall get that done. And then next weekend is the Swindon Winter Bonsai Show, and it's on the Sunday, and I will be going. Now, I may make arrangements to actually film my Sunday chat on Saturday so that I can post it on Sunday because I won't be filming on Sunday I'll be at the bonsai show it's in Swindon which is it's a good two-hour run might be even longer um, each way obviously and um, those sort of things I like to get there like when it opens so that I'm one of the first in there it allows me to film easier before it starts getting packed out um, they do have food there, so what I will probably do is leave early, get there on time for when it opens, <laughs> guaranteed parking space, all that stuff, you know, and then have some lunch there and then possibly make my way home early afternoon. So we shall see, but it is on the Sunday, so that's uh, next weekend stuff. 
And then not long after that is the Bournemouth Orchid Society's Spring Show, um, which I'll be going to with Hannah. Um, and then the week after that is the Wessex Show, um, which I'll be going early to that to help with the setup and everything and um, be there all day and all that sort of stuff. Hannah won't be coming to that one. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> she's, she's not interested enough in orchids to do two shows, one one after the other like that. So that's what's coming up. Um, obviously every Friday will, will be another um, <clears throat> 2023 Project Orchids video. Um, at this point in time, each Friday we're introducing the plants that you voted for. It's like an introductory video. So this, this is the plant, this is what it looks like now, this is what I'm doing with the plant now, this is what will change as the seasons progress, so uh, that's the idea of that. And I've got to get on with some repotting, so there will be some repotting videos. Um, and I really must get a bonsai video done, I haven't done one for ages. That channel is static at the moment, there's no, no new views, no new comments, nothing, because I don't produce the videos, because there's not much going on this time of year. But um, according to some long-term experience bonsai people there is some work I ought to be getting on with that I've always left till a bit later in the year um, it's basically initial pruning spring prune that's getting rid of dead bits crossing branches because you can see on the deciduous trees there's no leaves obviously you can see what you're doing and it's just a spring tidy up now in my case prior to repotting and this is why I think I need to get on with some of that, because I usually wait until the sap rises. So as the sap rises and the buds start to swell, before you waste too much of that, you cut off what you don't want. And then all that energy gets pushed into what's left, which makes good sense. Yeah. But there is also the theory that if you leave it until that sap rises, a fair bit of what you cut off is wasted energy and if you do it prior to the sap rising it can only rise and push out in the bits that are left so I might be doing some uh, things like maple and stuff like that I might be doing some pruning prior to repotting I've got a lot of repotting to do in the bonsai field Ooh, that's hard work as well yeah. compared with the compared with an orchid a bonsai is hard work yeah. right so that do for today thanks for dropping by Thanks for all the various support that the channel gets from you good people. Thanks for your comments. All comments get a reply of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Well, virtually all. We do get a couple of stroppy ones now and again. That um, I, I, If I get a comment that I haven't got anything to say about, I just leave a little heart to show that I've read it. But there isn't really a reply, if you know what I mean. Um, a lot of the time the reply is just thanks, you know, you say, nice video, so and so, so and so, so and so, thanks, you know. So there we go, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.